Hi and welcome back to Cheeky Crypto. My name is Nick and in today's video we are joined by some prominent figures from around the world to talk everything crypto. Guys, as we get into this video, if you find it useful and informative, do go ahead and hit the like button. I appreciate that. Chris appreciates it. And I like to think that all the people who are joining us today will also appreciate it. If you are new, then do go ahead and subscribe, tap the bell, select all notifications. And in doing so, you will not miss another update. If you feel inclined to do so, share it. It really helped push out these particular projects from the people who have joined us today. Um, and it'll be fantastic to get a bit of a bigger reach on this particular video. Right, with all that said, done and out of the way let's jump on down and welcome everyone over to the show and start getting into what exactly is going on here in the crypto space so hi and welcome to cheeky crypto we are joined today by mickey from world mobile marcelo from singularity dow lee from harmony and matt from evi shall we start with the brief introductions mickey absolutely nice to meet you thank you very much for having us on the show um, I'm Mickey. I run a company called World Mobile. World Mobile is a global mobile network operator based in the sharing economy. Yeah, um, Marcelo Mari here. I'm the CEO of Singularity DAO and uh, director of Singularity Net. Um, with Singularity DAO, we are trying to bring sophisticated artificial intelligence tools to the world of decentralized finance with the aim of bringing mass liquidity and making life, use, uh, life easier for everybody to get exposure to the crypto economy. Hey everyone, uh, I'm Lee from Harmony. I'm the CEO of Harmony. We are a layer one blockchain uh, that is very fast and uh, affordable to use. We're EVM Ethereum compatible and we're here to scale applications to billions of users so that uh, a billion people can be impacted by the power of crypto. Yeah, hi, great to be with you guys. Um, pleasure to be here. So Matt Dixon, uh, eBay.io is the, the business. We're basically the, the world's, we believe the world's first decentralized, unbiased cryptocurrency rating system. So without human touch, basically an artificial intelligence system using AI and machine learning to evaluate the true underlying value of cryptocurrencies. Um, so let's kick things off then um, with, you know, where we see blockchain technology heading and, uh, you know, what ultimately excites us most. Um, Mickey, do you want to take the, the floor with this one? It's the, it comes from the beginning. It's the ethos. It's what stands behind blockchain. Trans, more transparency. We're in a, a generation where people want answers. They want to know where their data is going. Uh, they, they, they don't want to trust anymore. They want to have trustless st uh, states. So I think, you know, more transparency, more, more trust um, and, and a better and more efficient way. I yeah, agree with that, Nikki. Um, all about transparency. So it all started obviously with Bitcoin um, and really came into its own following the crisis in 2008 with the financial crash then. And we saw the failure of ratings agencies. So that's really what I think motivated the um you know, the development of Bitcoin in the first place and allows more trust within the whole system, within the whole ecosystem. So that's what it's all about, trust and transparency. So wholeheartedly agree with you there, Mickey. And Lee, so what, what excites you about, um, you know, blockchain technology and where, where do you think that we're, we're heading with it all? Yeah, I think for the first time, um, so we're based in Silicon Valley and a lot of our team work with uh, Facebook, Amazon, Google, all these big tech companies have platforms for a billion people. But I think for the first time, like you have an open platform that anyone can access and use. And uh, the thing that's most exciting to me, honestly, right now is that by, by being able to scale some of these applications and making the fees uh, cheaper and affordable and easy to use that uh, people with even like $10 can now come in and try decentralized lending, right? Like that's, that's going to be the next wave of uh, people that come into blockchain. Because right now, if you look at the number of wallets, there's only maybe hundreds of thousands of people that use some of these DeFi applications. It's still very small because, you know, you can't, it's, they're being priced out of Ethereum mainnet or some of the, the existing projects. So I'm very excited to see like the next 10 million, 100 million people come into the space. Yeah. And I, I read somewhere that uh, blockchain technology is like growing, like, double the speed of any other technology in history, I think it's remarkable stuff. Um, so what, what are your thoughts, Marcelo? Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, we've seen uh, constantly new players coming in, uh, more and more people becoming familiar with the crypto space as, uh, you know, the value of BTC is growing and, uh, and more people are interested in it. Of course, you guys mentioned trust, which is, of course, extremely important. We've all been here for quite a few years now, myself. I've been in crypto since 2017. I've seen 
uh, crypto summers and crypto winters. Um, we all navigated that bad period. It was difficult for all of us, it was difficult from financial perspective and also from a motivational and psychological perspective. And yes, it's true that trust is extremely important. And I think the community have learned how to trust us because we've been around for, for a long time, as I said, we're kind of OG, we are the old guard of, of, of crypto. However, um, since I joined, I've seen a lot of projects coming and going, right? A lot of them disappearing. And I think that what is exciting right now is to see that we laid down the basic infrastructure in the past few years. Now we have the true player that survived the, uh, the crypto winter, but also a lot of, as I said before, a lot of new players coming in, uh, a lot of newbies. And unfortunately with new players coming in, um, in it, we, we really need to reestablish re that level of trust with the community. And, and that unfortunately comes, comes out when, uh, when we see a lot of rug pulls, for example, right? I mean, new, new ecosystem, new communities coming in, but also like players that are not so trustworthy. So I think the community is learning how and who to trust. And uh, I feel privileged to be part of this group of extremely trustworthy people. But we have to say that not everybody in, in the crypto space is, is, mm -hmm. is this trustworthy, right? So uh, it's exciting to see how players are establishing, how companies are growing, how we're creating new infrastructure and building down the new base for building new trust. Mm, super. And uh, I was going to ask, you know, what, what role do you feel AI has in, in blockchain technology, Marcelo? Has a massive role. So with SingularityNet, we've been exploring the combination of AI and blockchain for quite some time. Ben Gortzel have, lead the, have led the way uh, with, with SingularityNet and uh, laying down the base for the emergent AGI. And uh, the, the role is multiple, it's, it's multiple, right? So Singularity Net is evolving to become an ecosystem um, of, of different companies and spin off all, all utilizing AI at different levels and all participating to build this infrastructure and this fabric that will generate one day the, uh, the emerging AGI. So with Singularity DAO, our vertical, our specific vertical is decentralized finance. And we really want to innovate the space by providing retails and institutions with new tools that can use for um for 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 becoming more efficient and and making the life easier to bring more people in um so artificial intelligence is growing as it's growing the mass of data that we are feeding the algos with so a lot can be done uh it's a new space we are pioneers and that's why it's so exciting to be here right now Awesome. And obviously, um, Matt, as well, you're obviously using artificial intelligence, right? But maybe from a slightly different perspective, it's all about understanding the data, right, at a mass scale. Yeah, I mean, um, about understanding the data. But, you know, as you know, with us, the big thing is about trying to remove bias. So the big thing for us about artificial intelligence is removing that human bias, that human intervention. Um, so using all the, the, the power of artificial intelligence to um, continually evolve what we're doing. So we've created a, a system that, um, you know, a multi-factor system, and it's potentially an infinite factor system that, um, as you say, where the AI, the artificial intelligence, can actually identify the factors that have real predictive value in the market. So whilst we're not into necessarily into short-term trading, we've already found and our studies have shown that what we've created can actually outperform the market on a risk-adjusted basis and this is absolutely unheard of. Um, as I say, on a risk adjusted basis, it's unheard of. People can't do that. So it just proves the power of artificial intelligence. And we've seen that, you know, with Gary Kasparov in the very early days of artificial intelligence and how now, you know, a, you know, a human has no chance against a computer. And that's the way things are going. And yeah. that's why advances are now so, so rapid as we're seeing. It's just amazing to see the pace of uh, the pace of change. Uh, that we're all involved with. And it's just lovely to see everybody here pushing the, the boundaries of what AI can do for us. Yeah, it's really interesting stuff. I mean, for me, artificial intelligence and um, crypto, those two things has come together so well. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously, Lee, I mean, so you spoke about um, you know, decentralized finance, and so did you, Marcelo, as well. And, and I guess, you know, 
though decentralized finance moving further forward you know we often just think about it you know as in terms of like yield farming and things like that however there's also potentially bigger plays afoot right when it comes to decentralized finance and and mickey this is probably maybe more towards you and something some of the things that you are doing uh, obviously is is in Tanzania specifically, moving the needle significantly, allowing people to actually, you know, start to to run businesses, right? Which is uh, again in a decentralized way. Do you want what were your, your what are your thoughts on um, on decentralized finance? It's there's a lot of innovation in the space. Um, I think there's a lot of copycats. I didn't like to witness um, the anonymity of of many of the players in the space, um, but I also understood that actually it's really hard. To create a financial instruments or financial tools uh when and put your face to it because you are disrupting so mm-hmm. it's in a moment where the only real users of DeFi are the people who are users of ethereum and they're just trying to understand and there's only a very fair few that that understand and they're the ones making the money from it right. um mm-hmm. i think the future of DeFi is maybe maybe very different than what we see today um and it's 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 somehow targeting you just said about the blockchain and the ai in order for, for for AI to be successful, it, it's entirely dependent on the, the information that you initially feed it. So blockchain with its immutability, with its timestamping is is perfect for that. Now, if you think about self-data governance and you think about uh, something that we don't have right now, but on the, on our network, for example, you know, this is something we want to provide, but other people will as well. Um, AI will be able to then assess uh, without any human intervention the, whether someone can apply for a top-up loan. Top-up loans are massive in, in yeah. emerging markets. People would like to be able to borrow $3, $5 um, to be able to survive the rest of the month out or the week out on their phone credit. So that's one of the first things that we'll be doing. So we're, we're transitioning with the with IOHK, uh, with the Cardano ecosystem, um, and with other key DeFi players, transitioning to a point where we can take DeFi into, I guess, into a, a real five world where liquidity pools can exist. And of course, this regulation, you need to pass all types of regulations, very difficult. But uh, we believe in, in East Africa, this it's ripe for for um, adopting this and DeFi will become something that it isn't today. Yeah, and I, I kind of feel like you're playing a big role just in onboarding people uh, online, right? So they're going to then have the the other infrastructure to be able to, to get loans and, you know, start identity. businesses. Yeah, identity, all of that like magical stuff right and uh yeah I've, we we talk quite a lot on on the channel around like the the size of this market how small it is and and, and sort of where we're we're heading right and uh you know multi multi trillion dollar markets kind of where we see it um and tokenization and, and all this sort of wonderful stuff i don't think people quite fathom it at the moment um you know when you see the market move the way it does i guess because it's so small right now right mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I mean, one of the big issues is I think uh, the whole tokenized market is so sort of overshadowed by Bitcoin and Ethereum. Um, when you think about it, all the trading pairs, you know, so many of them are against Bitcoin and Ethereum. And this is uh, distorts the true value of the of all the different assets. And I think people need you need to be able to separate out the true value. And again, that's what we're trying to do with trying to um, create a genuine underlying value of the various assets out there and there are some amazing assets i mean and not just because you're here lee but um one of our favorite is is uh, one harmony um where you you can identify the underlying value and you're not you, you know you can you can remove the dis- distortions from bitcoin and ethereum you know you see bitcoin go up and ethereum go up and the whole market goes up with it but you need to be able to have ways to identify the true underlying value and that will remove a lot of the big swings and they'll allow the market to mature a lot more um, when people can actually identify the true value. So, much, so, so many of the amazing projects that are much, way more advanced. Um, I don't want to mention particular names here, but there's some amazing projects out there that are overshadowed. And we need to, you know, we need to, to provide transparency to enable people, to empower people to make um, the right decisions on not only investment, but these are businesses that they can get involved with. Um, you know, you mentioned about blockchain, it's not just about crypto, it's about the whole way that business operates and the um, massive advances and efficiency that we get and the way that we can involve 
um, trading and all these different things in so much more efficient way, just with housing, for example, the old mortgage process and the, you know, the title deeds and all that kind of stuff, using kind of NFT and different um, technologies, we can make this just so much more efficient. The future is really exciting and it's just coming along so quickly. That's exactly it. Actually, I kind of take the next question right out of my mouth there, Matt, because it's thoughts on tokenization, right? Because, you know, we've been talking about it for a while on the channel in, in the way that we expect in the future that almost everything would be tokenized, right? Stocks, housing, fine art, wine, you kind of name it, it potentially could be tokenized, right? And um, it's an interesting kind of area that I don't think many people really appreciate the kind of level that it can go to. Um, but Lee, I know obviously with Harmony and obviously tokenization, you've obviously run NFT uh, platform DaVinci as well on uh, Harmony. Um, but what's your thoughts on tokenization? Yeah, I think um, basically, I think you're right. Everything will be tokenized. And um, the things that touch the real world, like what I think what Mickey was probably talking about earlier, uh, I would say you guys are doing all the hard work of actually touching the real world, actually touching government, actually touching law and jurisdictions. And um, like some of the, some of the real assets, like real estate probably actually are really hard. It's the idea has been around for four years, five mm -hmm. years uh, since, since I got started in this space. But I think, um, you know, tokenizing financial asset makes sense because it's just a superior technology. It's like, the idea of why retail stores are no longer as prominent because online shopping is better. You get more selection, faster shipping, and and everything's much more efficient, right? It's the same with blockchain. is more efficient than a centralized ledger to account for finance. It's more efficient than uh, the current way we sell and uh, and distribute art, uh, which is why NFTs are so big now. And mm -hmm. all the intellectual property will become liquid intellectual property that becomes tokenized. And I think uh, even DAOs, right? We haven't talked. Uh, much about decentralized autonomous organizations today, but uh, I think there are going to be more efficient forms of governing a country, a company, uh, rather than the current setup. So th the the reason why everything will be tokenized is because this is a superior technology, right? And at the end of the day, like in the long arc of human history, uh, a more efficient technology always win out. We always want less friction in the world. We always want more efficiency in the world. And it just so, makes sense. Uh, yeah, it, it just makes sense, right? You're on the yeah. right side of history. I think there's a French saying about like how you're on the, I can't say it in French, but uh, uh, you know, the, it's like, uh, maybe they came out, came up with it during the French revolution, but it's like, if you're on the right side of history, uh, you'll, you'll eventually uh, end up in the right place. I kind of feel like it, it makes it a level playing field, right? Because you can then sort of look at the, I don't know, let's say, you know, penthouses in, in New York or, or London, for example, and how much they, they, they cost. It's almost like you, you can do it at a macro or micro level uh, and buy a percentage of a property, right? It, it, for me, it kind of levels the, the playing field as, a, as an investor as well, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and not, not just that, I mean, something that we often forget to mention, but the tokenization of sport is something that is really exciting. Um, if you guys, I mean, I haven't had the chance to follow that closely, but tokenization of, 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 of I mean, fa fun tokens, right? And yeah. and how, how, how popular they're becoming. I mean, I saw Inter Milan is now, I mean, on, on their t-shirt, they have sponsored by So Rare and apparently part of Messi's um, salary will be paid in tokens i mean this is this is massive i mean it, this is the perfect way to reach the masses right i mean yeah. through through sport and we're getting crypto in front of billions of people potentially i mean it's the most popular sport in the world right so tokenization of sport as well that's that's not good out there fulham Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, well, well, uh, mobile is now on the front of Fulham's T-shirt, and I talked about ah. this on, on the show the other day as well. Um, I think it's going to be remarkable walking around London and just seeing people with replica football shirts with yeah. World Mobile on the front. Like, yeah, yeah I just even more remarkable will be tuning in to a new esports league across the African continent and zooming out and seeing villages that still have mud huts and on stilts all of a sudden with play centres that have lightning fast internet. <laughs> Uh, all, all green energy, all powered, uh, and where you know the scores of these athletes, these e athletes, the future generation, uh, are logged on the blockchain. So it's, it's a super exciting time for us, and we also believe sports is the way to to reach the masses. As a, as a seasoned telco people, it's always been a great relationship with with sports clubs um, and getting the brand awareness out there. But even more so, um, I believe now. 
Yes, yeah. exactly. Isn't it? I mean, we've seen, uh, so as you say, Marcelo, um, it's so rare. And there's chilies uh, as well. I, I read that Inter Milan had um, got like thir- an additional 34 million revenue from fan tokens. Um, I just thought that was remarkable. So, yeah, I think for, for mass adoption, I think, you know, getting into to the, the sports scene from from a crypto side of things and blockchain side of things is is immense and, and not just betting either right because that's, no, you know, no. that's 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 where we've seen typically it going but mm. now you know if you want mass adoption you've got to do a couple of things one you've got to go to where there isn't already mass adoption that's the easiest way but of course those places the infrastructure is lacking identity power connectivity so you, yeah, you know, tokenization that... for this market as well is massive and i was thinking about that you know it's not that this uh, everyone comes to me everyone excuse me definitely not everybody but people come to me and say to me, well look how are you going to make money in, in Af- african village and it's it's like they think that african villages don't work or don't have work or they they they've been working for since they were born they they're the best workers in the world they 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 the best entrepreneurs i've ever seen without any infrastructure or, or no light after eight o'clock in the evening and they've still got buckets of money underneath the bed so you bring mm-hmm. connectivity you bring identity you bring a way for them to to have self you know self data governance and economic freedom of choice and boom you know they're buying straight into tokenization as well and then their 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 countries their states they they are going to be very open as they see the transformation of of blockchain technologies they're going to be very open to many different aspects and actually will start to lead um what we call the the first world which is you know not the first world that that will become the first world exactly yeah and i think you know there's there's many uh, projects in the space that are just doing wonderful things when you know like what you're, you're talking about mickey you know um they're going to be you know life-changing for many right um so obviously tokenization has uh you know broad uh <laughs> appeal shall we say um but obviously with that we has mentioned was nfts now we've seen that um you've bought some nfts lee um but what's your thoughts on nfts as a whole and the way that they're currently being utilized yeah, I think we're just barely scratching the surface of NFTs uh, right now. Like, um, as some of you, you said this about Yield Farm, where everyone's like doing the same farms and, mm. and forking each other. That's the stage we're at with NFTs as well. People are kind of doing the same repetitive projects on different chains or different uh, illustrations. But I think that like you see real artists. Actually, um, uh, we had a meetup in San Francisco yes last night, and like you see artists who previously never had even the opportunity to showcase their work or to have self sovereignty to control like what they want to do. They were always like had clients that they had to go out and get in their neighborhood or in their uh, state, whatever. But now they can have this like massive global audience that they can do whatever is, you know, true to themselves um, and, and put that in front of the world. And you, you'll see that with music, with movie and like, you know, you'll have fractionalized ownership of movie rights. You'll have DAOs that, you know, uh, create that actually there's a DAO that funded the Ethereum documentary called the infinite garden, Ethereum infinite garden. And so you'll start to see like, uh, that next wave of like collective NFTs as a way of collective or fractionalized ownership for all kinds of things. Um, and then like, hopefully, uh, you know, NFTs will be like your, your, um, any work, like you guys can NFT this, uh, podcast or this video cast right and and uh make that unique and you see like um products like mirror where they're actually uh having people like it's a decentralized medium but each of those medium articles are your like unique properties that once you if you're the first person to put it on chain that'll be yours forever and unique so i think like all of our human re- like if you could turn all of hu- humanity's resource and creativity into nfts uh that's what that's that's what can be possible uh, in the in the next few years. Yes. Yeah, and, and and just not in terms of audience reach. I mean, you said of course, like artists, they now have a whole new audience that they can reach out to. But digital artists, they had no way to monetize their digital art before. And these, I mean, there are amazing creations, and we've seen it right with with, with all this new wave of, of 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 NFTs. And now, thanks to intellectual property certification of 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 an NFT they finally be able to sell their art. And this is something extremely ra- remarkable. I mean, we wouldn't have people without, yes. without NFTs, right? And, and I mean, the people is of course, like a fantastic artist of our generation and, um, and, and with him, so, so, so many others. So yeah, uh, absolutely new audience, but also like new artists coming to the, uh, 
art art playground. And you've got people like Luxo Fabian over there. He he was the inventor of the of the ERC twenty protocol or the RC protocol for for NFTs on the Ethereum. Um, he's making an exceptional. The, if you look at their team, they're they're moving into the space because they they understand what limited edition means, right? This is with NFT you can prove what limited edition is, and yeah. adoption it comes usually from joy, from joy of using something. So, mm. um, or the necessity to use something. So it's not necess it's not necessary to have a um, a digital version of your Nike shoes, um, but it, you know if you've got everything else, then all of a sudden it's very fun, and when something becomes fun, you know it attracts the younger generation and. It is. Uh, this could become very, very much part of our future. I think, yeah, especially we, when you can have a one out of one, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. We seen. Um, is it VV where you get like you can put the NFT into to like a, a virtual reality and and stuff like that? It's really interesting. Um, yeah, so many different uh, types of NFTs uh, in the space. It's, it is a really interesting space, and it seems to be uh, one of those areas that you know I think is going to be really good for. For, for adoption of, of, yeah. of crypto and blockchain for, for sure. Think about mm. esports. Yeah. yeah. yeah Think about NFT in games. I mean, the, the, the day that uh, people will be able to trade weapons on Fortnite in, in the form mm -hmm. of an NFT. Yeah, that's right. I mean, that's where all it was born. It was born all from World, world of Warcraft, basically, right? Yeah. That's the very yeah. beginning of the NFT world, I would say. I mean, it's true democratization, as Mickey was saying earlier, it's about creating a level playing field for everybody. So it's just amazing that everybody from whatever walk of life and without having to you know it's not about who you know anymore um genuinely every has everyone has opportunity um i've no idea that it's going to be discussed tonight but i'm but whilst we're talking i was just thinking about is the uh, you know the, C the the movement towards um central bank digital currencies is that going to stifle is it even going to be allowed to fly with the way that you know, all of the movement at the moment is about democratization. I just worry about, you know, with CBDCs, you're going to get centralization again and control, and it will stifle this amazing movement we have. Um, has anybody got any thoughts on, on that? Yeah, nothing will grow to the billions unless you have some form of centralization it needs to have. Um, you, unfortunately, we all need somebody to, to look over and make sure everything is good. The beauty of crypto, the beauty of blockchain is that that centralization can't be abused anymore. And if it can, it's only a certain amount of time before it can be audited. So you do kind of create by the immutability again, you do kind of create that self, um, very philosophical, but the self-governance of, of an entire nation, essentially, because leaders or, or people or financial institutions, if everything is stored and logged, you know, it's only a matter of time before they stop to behave in a way that they might have behaved when it wasn't logged. Um, so yes uh, and no, but I think that you're never going to get mass adoption of any type of cryptocurrencies um, unless you have some kind of centralization from from a, from a central bank. But that immutability, that transparency, is the difference here. Yeah, I think it's a, an interesting one. I, I I agree. I kind of feel like it that there has to be an an element of centralization. Um, but I kind of see the banks long term getting into to the DeFi scene. I don't know what people's thoughts are on, on on that. I just look at, you know, the the amount of interest, for example, they they can offer, um, you know, like a you know a um, retail bank, for example, you know, if you set up a, a savings account, you're not really getting much interest, right? I kind of feel like, you know, decentralization is uh, or decentralized finance is going to be the area that they they look to to sort of change that. I don't know what your, your views and uh, opinions are. I know uh, World Mobile, if, uh, you've partnered with Meld, haven't you? Is that right? Yeah, Meld, Meld is one of uh, one of the protocols, the lending protocols that we're looking at, uh, that we partnered with, and there's there's many more. But right now, um, they're very interesting because they're doing crypto, uh, they're doing fiat to fiat. So in mm. a place that you need um, fiat and you can't have crypto because legislation doesn't allow you to, or regulation doesn't allow you to, in emerging markets, these they're one step ahead of everybody else. Yeah, what what are your thoughts about banks potentially getting into decentralized finance? Like, you know, do as you long as it has a form of regulation of some form, they'll mm -hmm. get in. Of course, they will. They they want to access funds to be able to make more money with funds. Um, but maybe banks won't be the, the same kind of banks as we know today. Mm -hmm. Maybe banks will be, um, you know, governed by DAOs essentially as well, where liquidity pools are provided for them to be able to do the things that they need to do and to loan money out. But it's all again transparent. Yeah, there's got to be some kind of decentralized governance 
Um, regulation itself doesn't have a very good track record. Um, there's always been problems of either over-regulation or under-regulation. They can't seem to get it right. So maybe a decentralised governance is the way to go. And I think, um, yeah, that's the way we, we, we're going at the moment. I just hope it keeps going that way. Yeah, and I think, you know, that sort of brings us on to, to the next question, uh, which was sort of around thoughts on, on regulations and, you know, what sort of clarity is required in, in the space. We we see a lot, um, particularly around like the, the Ripple case in, in the, the media. Um, but, you know, what are your thoughts on on regulation and, and clarity and, and what do you think is going to sort of harness the, the technology to sort of, you know, continue to progress uh, at the speed or faster than it, it currently is? A successful, a, a successful case of mass adoption or mass inclusion, simply. Yeah. That's, that's what's going to do it is something's needed in order to, you know, connect 100 million people or 50 million people or 20 million people from the world to say, whoa, okay, now we, that's worth us actually learning because instead, because you, you're getting, you're getting laws and regulations created by people who don't understand what they're talking about or yeah. understand the, the technology, they don't understand the, the, the ethos, the people, the, they don't even know what crypto Twitter is, right? They have no yeah. idea. So you, you, I'm not saying that you have to in order to have the right regulation, but yeah, yeah, it's going to take a case of, it's a movement, it's a moment in time where adoption comes and then they'll say, okay, this is worth worth looking at and it's kind of happened right with with uh, bitcoin it's happened with ethereum you know mm -hmm. not to class it as a security but rather a, a utility um mm -hmm. it's happening but the problem is that still 95 percent of the people that are making these laws or these regulations have no idea what they're talking about mm -hmm. don't understand crypto they may have a um you know a, a 20 hour course at harvard uh, in technology um but that's that's as far as it goes so we need more experts we need the, the markets to mature uh, and, and we need that one that one moment where millions of people are connected and they say, okay. And you have to have re reliable people that are ready there with frameworks, with policies, with regulations that have invested into into the right legal teams to present those to governments. And because the governments themselves, if you leave them to create these regulations, not going to happen, not very quickly. They're already busy enough looking after their own people. So they need that assistance, they need that help, they need that support. So it's going to take a serious effort in this blockchain space, in this, in this crypto space, um, not just, hey, look, here's a project and this is what we did and here's a piece of code. There's much more behind mass adoption than than delivering a piece, a piece of code. Yeah, and mass adoption comes through education and regulation. The best form of regulation is actually education. And so, you know, not, not wanting to, you know, not wanting to push our project too much, but we're really passionate about education, about teaching people how to evaluate the various cryptos, but also how to engage safely with this uh, with this new world and new market. And that's really, you know, the problems, as you said, at least we're just beginning to see some dialogue in the US now around regulation. So as long as the dialogue and people are beginning to, to get some level of education, understanding about it, then that's the only way uh, we're going to get ma real mass adoption. People still can't spend you know, their Bitcoin or Ethereum, it's not happened yet. So there needs to be far more education, needs to be far more democratization um, of the usage of cryptocurrencies. So that's happening. We're just at the very beginning now. It's just a very nascent um, young child at the moment, and it's it's going to grow very quickly to adolescence and beyond. So, um, yeah, I, I think we're moving in the right direction. But uh, as I say, for me, we're absolutely passionate about education. I think that's the way forward. With regulation in every single democratic movement and every single democracy needs a certain level of education and i think yeah. we are still struggling to get that level of education in in in, in real life government yeah. democracy so i don't know i'm not that optimistic as you guys are i mean definitely we are going in that direction but i see it as as, as something that would take many 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 years yeah. especially i mean if i see sources of information in the blockchain space they're so scattered around uh, it's very difficult to get real information to distinguish what's good and what's not, what's paid and what's not, what's lobbied and what's not. As as, as Mickey was saying, I mean, it, it requires understanding crypto Twitter, perhaps. It requires understanding the nature of open source uh, decentralized communities. It requires understanding, you know, where where to go and find the right information. But that's that's a 24 seven job guys. I mean, I, yeah. I personally don't have time to follow everything that happens in crypto. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, we're all building companies here 
it's yeah. it's extremely difficult to be on top of things um the, the other day when the poly network hack happened and somebody was asking me about it i, I didn't even know i mean it took me like it took me like 24 hours to realize what, what was going on because i was busy with my daily life and and people are busy with their daily life they don't have time to source all of these crazy amount of information in irregular political democracy people rely on news gatekeeper and normally these news gatekeeper are the media the official mainstream media in blockchain do we have official mainstream media are these reliable are these providing the right and correct information for people to be informed and make informed decisions i'm not entirely sure maybe we need regulations there as well in somehow i mean not to say that mainstream media are doing a good job providing you know, political information in any way, but at least there is a plethora and multitude across across different different countries, different um, ecosystems. In 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 crypto, this is yet to be achieved, I believe. So, I don't know. I'm a bit skeptical. Yeah, and I think there was another another hack recently, DAO Maker. Um, yeah. Uh, so so yeah. So there's there's a lot in in the space at the moment. So I think like. The, the regulation side of things is really like prominent um, to, to sort of at least start conversations about right in, in, in the space. And uh, yeah, I don't know what your thoughts are, Lee, on on everything that's sort of happening in the space around the regulations and yeah. and some of the, the hacks that we've seen. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think as Marcelo was just saying, um, there, there will be periods, like this next period is gonna be very messy and um like as far as since i'm sitting in the us right just from the us perspective like i think uh slowly they might realize that like by not having good education awareness regulation like they're going to lose talent like one example is um you know ftx actually the founding team was uh basically very local uh, near where i live alameda research is actually named after this little town called alameda right across the bay but now they're in Hong Kong and it's a $20 billion company that, you know, the U.S. has uh, no benefit, gets no benefit from um, because they just completely decamp. So, so um, there will be, there are all these players playing, you know, regulatory arbitrage they are going to places where it's easier to set up their projects. And, uh, but, the, but the problem I think right now is that we're still too small for the, for the you know, the federal government to care. So maybe when we're 10 X bigger or hundred X bigger, like they'll realize, Hey, um, by not having very clear regulation or by doing the wrong things or by, you know, by taking, trying to control. We're going to lose out. Yeah, we're going to lose out. But I think we're too small. We're under, we're too under the radar uh, for them to care at this point, right? Like um, technology, I, I think from Silicon Valley, technology companies have been fighting the government on like things like immigration for years and years, right? And it's still a continuous fight mm -hmm. to even like move, move an inch. So yeah, I think. Uh, but on a global level, I'm very optimistic that, you know, projects can start anywhere now, They're, they can go anywhere, they can be based anywhere, and people can be much more flexible to travel around. I think, uh, w w like, the crypto community is going to make crypto happen, well, regardless of whether the government likes it or not. Kind of circle back a little bit, because obviously, Mickey, you're talking about, you know, it takes mass adoption to really get regulations and to, to kind of get things moving. And then to go on to what you were talking about, Matt, about CBDCs and the threat of CBDCs, it does take the, the a CBDC to get the mass adoption that you then obviously need to be the catalyst for regulation in the space. But a part of that is another, another thing that Harmony are doing quite well, uh, and amongst some other chains as well, which is interoperability, right? Building bridges between the chains, because not only is education key and vital to, to driving that adoption with CBDCs, but also is making it easy to use, right? You need to be able to move assets around and you want to make it as easy as possible for that to happen. We look at the space at the moment, and actually it's relatively complex to move assets between different chains, unless you're already on the right chain. Um, so I think, yeah, I think we're on the right track. I think we're moving in the general direction in a real positive way, um, but we've still got quite a bit of work to do. Yeah, and I think, you know, hopefully we won't have, you know, um, big, big, you know, future giant companies you know move to, to somewhere that's perhaps more regulatory friendly um you know hopefully they can sort of make some some big moves on on the regulation side of things i don't know if i'm just thinking blue sky um world but yeah i think it would be a real shame for for some of these uh potentially huge companies to to move to other parts of the world i think you know 
I don't know. For me, it's like small, small uh, mind thinking and uh, or closed mind thinking. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, we, right. we've got it happening in the UK, haven't we, right now? Yeah, you know, yeah, we it's have. Really, yeah. It's really, it's really unclear. The CIA are really after everybody, and it's it's like, hold on, what's going on? This, yeah. was, this was like a witch hunt. It was like you're not encouraging any of us to stay on. So we you know World Mobile Group is a UK based based company. Uh, we've got good dialogue with the FCA. Um, and we've got, we work with CMS Group, and we have a great uh, tax tax advisors. But it's difficult still. And I, you know, how how do you how do you create such um, a movement without the support of your of your governments? It seems so draconic still, and that we're, we're we're stuck in a way where they're trying to govern as it was in the 80s or the 70s or or the you know the early 90s, um, even worse. Hmm. So I hope that I hope that we don't all have to move abroad and we don't all have to, you know, move to places where we we can actually innovate and it isn't stifled. Well, we've moved from the UK to Dubai because Dubai is so much more um, tech friendly, so much more enabling, and the governments are really looking. They're forward looking. They're they're really, uh, you know, provide the the best assistance and setting up the free zones and everything to come in. Um, you know, they're they're supportive. We didn't we didn't experience that in the UK. Um, I genuinely worried for our business, but that, then as soon as we got to Dubai, it's just a completely different environment. And there's a few centres around the world that are recognised. You know, you've got Dubai, you've got some, you know, you've got Singapore, you've got Hong Kong, um, you've got Switzerland, and these are places, key places now. So I think the, you know, the places like UK, possibly America, you know, the places need to wake up to what's happening with business and not get left behind before it's too late. We're also, we're also moving to Dubai, right? We're also establishing Dubai. I, I'm, I'm based in Dubai most, most of my time. And um, like comparing what happened in, in, in the UK recently, right, with Brexit that caused a, f a flood of talent to leave the country while Dubai is working so well to attract talent. So it's not just a regulatory environment. It's not like, not just like not taxation, but also the human capital that you can get in in Dubai because of their ability to attract this talent is very remarkable. And that you know, London used to be used to be the center for 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 growing human capital in uh, in Europe. And unfortunately, after living eight years in London, I haven't seen that much anymore. And just just um, you know, talking about talent and and, and losing pools of, of talent due to to I guess some of the situations in in various parts of the world. Is there a shortage of talent? We we talked a little bit on educational uh, educational uh, you know elements and, and stuff like that, but you know is, is there a real need for 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 people that can work and evolve in the crypto space? We've actually got people from all around all around the world um, with their particular skill sets. I mean, it's like a jigsaw, and we've got everyone with their different skills, and we're able to access that skill set from anywhere in the world now. And it wasn't really possible before COVID. So whilst there's been, you know, it's been a terrible thing, um, there are positives, certainly from our from our perspective, um, in just changing people's, uh, you know, their perspective on the way uh, the way we work. It's just changed things completely. So I know people now, lawyers, so many different people working um, remotely, and it's just I think that's the way it needs to be. And people actually seem to be more efficient working remotely, they're better motivated, they're not wasted, wasting travel time. Um, you know, it's just a cleaner life, it's a greener life, and, and a more efficient, particularly, as I say, in the environment that we're working in, in the ecosystem. Yeah, and I think and I think we, we, we are sort of privileged that we live on this side of the world, but I'm very interested in Lee's point of view. I mean, in Silicon Valley, like, how do you build a startup in Silicon Valley with such a shortage of, of I mean, it's not a shortage of talent, yeah. like getting access to, to developers, I mean, it's so so damn expensive. How do you guys manage? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I I agree. So I think actually Silicon Valley has a disadvantage now in mm. uh, in the decentralized world. Like it has the most concentration of Web two talent, tech, capital. But right now, like you see you see companies popping up everywhere, projects popping up everywhere, and their cost basis is like twenty five percent of what it is here. <laughs> really, and 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 but I think what's what's really amazing about blockchain is like, you know, whether it's lending or allowing like micro entrepreneurs everywhere in the world, like you're unlocking this new set of talent uh, to participate in like the global economy. Um, so not even just like 
we are we're able to get developers everywhere in the world now, um, which is nice through like open source contribution and having this idea of a token that can go across any border in two seconds and you get paid um, mm -hmm. for doing that work. Like that's a that's already amazing. But I think like the second order effect of blockchain is like you can get little bits of capital directly to, into the hands of people everywhere in the world, right? Like, it, like I think today our economy is like driven by a small group of large companies and and like um, enough, like maybe a few percent of the world's population. Imagine like 7 billion people, 100% of the world population, like really participating together in the global economy. And they also participate in this like digital currency, whether it's, you know, one chain or multiple chains connected together, like all as part of this one. It's like, you know, having having the internet, but then creating value on top of everything that's, that's ever done that can be touched by anybody who's connected to this global network, right? So like, that's- Half the world. Yeah, exactly. I, well, only half the world. Only ha still, right? And so yeah. hopefully in, with, you know, Starlink and everything else, like we'll get the second half of the world on. Star Starlink has a backlog in the United States of half a million customers. Starlink yeah. has no solution to connect the unconnected, and it's a good solution for backhaul providers. But they have um, they're still experimenting with their bandwidth, and they at the moment it's not it's only stationary. You can't move a Starlink device, which suggests that there's difficult connectivity. So actually, it's it's more about wireless ISPs on the ground, not just World Mobile and um, traditional telecom providers than it is about Starlink right now. Although Starlink is pretty cool, Space Mobile is pretty cool. It's just very much future future driven technology is there anything that anybody wants to sort of leave the audience with anything we haven't sort of touched on i'll, I'll just say um it's an exciting time to join i think there's a lot of people who are especially uh i've been to some san francisco meetups recently where a lot of people are curious i would say like it's an amazing time to jump in and uh try to build something a lot of stuff a lot of things are open source a lot of things are available uh for people who are new to the space um, i keep telling friends who are interested just to come in and, and do something and build in the space. Uh, my housemate who used to be in a part of the Ethereum community, but then left uh, during the bear market, I, I'm telling him every day, hey, you need to come back and see what's going on because things are very different now. So that's kind of my message to everyone who's watching or listening who's curious is to really like, this is worth um, diving back into, whether it's part-time, full-time, like there's so many things that could, be built uh, and and the field is still wide open. It's still super early, uh, so that's my message. Definitely agree. Get involved now. You know the next <laughs> two, three, four years is where it's all going to be set, and there's still going to be there, early then. And there's so many ways to get involved. I mean, uh, my my experience in 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 building Singularity DAO. I mean, I would say that eighty percent of my team of, of singularity that was in on my team but was recruited from from our community so b b before it wasn't possible right i mean it's not that somebody can just join coca-cola's community and have and, and hope to be hired by coca-cola or nike's community and hope to be hired by nike's right here people have young generation have the possibility to 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 get involved in this open source decentralized community contribute and then eventually be part of the project right you can be part of a dao you can be part of, a, of an open source movement. I think this is extraordinary. And, uh, and yes, this is extremely open and participatory and, uh, and I can't wait to, to have more people floating in and uh, to have more access to talents and, uh, and to be able to, to have more smart people participating to our DAO. So just, just on that note, you know, I, I'm, I'm completely new to crypto, um, but really want to get involved, really love everything. What's the, the best way to, to sort of, you know, get involved in, in some of these projects, obviously you could become a validator, uh, a few other, you know, entry points, but if you really wanted to, to get involved, you know, with the nitty gritty with a, an actual project. I think it's very easy to pick a few that you like, uh, and jump in their discord and telegram, like try not to get overwhelmed but like just pick like you know your favorite two or three and see what what their community is working on um and there there are lots of small ways like being a validator is actually pretty high bar but you know, minting an nft or uh you know trying a new product or adding liquidity into a pool like these are all these little bits and pieces that you can do and and there are, um there there's starting to be some onboarding project like crypto onboarding like they'll say hey finish this task and 
claim this reward so that these are these are the ways that new people can just try something and then they'll they, they get hooked and then they get involved um but of course just i think it's really about the human element and engaging on these channels or yeah discord again forums a lot of these everything's almost almost completely open both the code and the human and the conversations so I, uh that's a good place to start yeah yeah no, i totally agree with you i mean getting getting overwhelmed is quite it's quite easy right i mean with all with all these cool projects around somebody is tempted like to to start learning about everything but if you pick like the two or three that you really like you study them well you start participating in the community i mean i i, I don't know about your community guys but our you know we got like people 24 7 always willing to help others even with the most basic question i mean sometimes i get in and see like people asking always the same basic questions but there's always somebody ready to help and uh, and this is the beauty of this ecosystem and as you said add liquidity to a pool uh start creating wallets um participate to a forum or, or or even just you know participate in the community and start answering questions based on your own knowledge and i mean that's yeah, there are, there are there are plenty of ways, and then eventually you can you might as well be hired as I said before. Who knows? Yeah. yeah. Back to education again. At the end of the day, it's about educating yourself. As as Lee mentioned, there are so many ways to get on board with different projects, um, and and also uh, you know we at Evi, um, hopefully providing some some real transparent information about all the different projects out there. So it's a very easy way to get involved. Um, with some hopefully legitimate solid projects um uh, yeah and and diversify don't don't just get stuck with one there's so much opportunity and so much diversity out there um it's just great to to learn and be part of this big worldwide community now or, or start a youtube channel <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and invite cool people to have great conversation with you, right? uh, invite the best people to have cool conversations that's yeah, exactly, is, that. <laughs> exactly we'll wrap it up there and um, so really do want to kind of thank you all for for joining us today um it's been great you, um, to get good insights from you guys it's been yes. a pleasure. great to meet you all thank you Thanks yeah, a lot. Thank you so much. It was great. Thank you guys. All the yeah, best, gents. Bye. Take it easy. Like nice it. to meet you. Thanks a lot. Thanks a yeah. lot, cheeky guys. Bye. Cheers, guys. Mm -hmm. And there you go, guys. It was fantastic to be joined by four key people within the blockchain space. If you guys have found this video useful, informative, maybe even insightful at times, then do hit the like button. Chris and myself really appreciate that. If you do feel inclined to do so, share it. Get the messages out there, guys. With all this said, done and out of the way, I hope everyone has a fantastic day and we'll catch you all in the next one.